Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking all about a keyword called mutable and how we can use it. So mutable actually has two fairly different uses. One of them is to do with const. If you don't know how constants work in C++, you can check out the video that I made yesterday about that. Just click on the card or the link in the description below. And then the other use is actually with lambdas. So we'll kind of cover both of them. I know I haven't actually talked about lambdas and what they even are. But a few of you are probably wondering what on earth I'm talking about, but definitely will in the future. But I thought I'd just make a quick video to cover what mutable actually means because the two cases are actually rather different. The word, the English word mutable, of course, means that it's something that is liable to change. It's something that can change. And you've probably heard me say immutable before, meaning that something cannot be changed. Mutable is the opposite of that. It means something can change. So when we talk about mutable in the context of const, obviously we're talking about something that is kind of const, but actually can change. So it's almost like mutable reverses the meaning of const. We really only have one application of mutable in that context, and that is with class methods. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna create a class here called entity. I'm going to give it one private member, which is going to be a name. I'm also going to write a getter for this function. So we'll have a const std string reference. We'll call it get name. It will, the function will be marked as const. If you don't know what that means, then check out the video that I made yesterday about const in C++. And this will just basically return our name. Okay, so we have a fairly basic function here that's a getter. I'm actually gonna move this down over here. The const over here means that we're not allowed to modify the actual class members. So I can't, for example, reassign name to be something else. And really this applies to every variable. The primary reason for making these methods const in the first place and kind of promising that you're not going to touch the class is because if we actually do wind up having some kind of const entity object over here, we would be able to call those const methods. Whereas if they weren't marked as const, we actually wouldn't be able to do that. So that's why we mark these methods as const in the first place. However, in some situations, we kind of do still want to mark a method as const because for all intents and purposes, it is constant. It's not modifying the object per se, but maybe, just maybe, it needs to just touch that variable over there that's kind of in the entity class technically, but not really meant to kind of be there. I'll give you an example. Let's just say that for debugging purposes, we wanted to count how many times this function was called in our program. We might have some kind of integer called debug count or something, which is initialized with zero. And every time we call this function, we just wanted to increment that count. Now we can't do that here. So a solution would be to kind of get rid of const and then we would be fine, right? But now we can't call it over here and we've kind of broken this. And really this is just a getter for name. So surely we can kind of just increment this without losing the constants of this method. And of course we could move this out into some other class or something, and that will be totally fine, but that's gonna be messy because this applies specifically to this function or to this class. So what we can do is restore our const here and just mark this variable debug count as mutable, meaning that we're allowing constant methods to change it. And now all is well in the world, we can do this const entity stuff here, and we can also have a nice const method which actually does modify this particular class member. So marking a class member as mutable means that const methods inside that class can actually modify that member. That right there is probably the most common usage of mutable by a quite a quite a big margin. Using mutable with class members like this is probably the only time you'll ever use it, to be honest. But there is, however, one more use for mutable, and I might as well cover that today. It's to do with lambdas. So without making this too complicated because I haven't covered lambdas yet, suppose that we had some kind of variable here, we'll make in x equals zero. And then I wanted to declare some kind of lambda. So I'll just call it f and I'll write some code over here. Maybe it does something like prints hello to the console. I don't know, it could be really anything. It's just a lambda. A lambda is basically like a little throwaway function that you can write and assign to a variable quickly like we've done here. We can call a lambda just like any other function by using its name like this and just specifying any parameters we might have. Now suppose that we actually wanted to use x over here. Like instead of printing hello, I wanted to print x. That's going to be fine. I can just pass in x like this. However, I do need to define some kind of capture method. So we can either send this variable by reference like this or by value like that. Or you can just type in equals or ampersand to send everything basically that's used in here by reference or by value. Now suppose that this lambda actually did some extra stuff. Maybe it did x plus plus. However, we still wanted this to be by value. You'll see that if I actually change this to be by value and I try to do something like x plus plus, 
I get an error. And what I actually would have to do in this situation is maybe make another variable, assign it to this, and then kind of essentially increment or, or modify that variable. I have to copy it and I have to basically create a local variable which can actually take the value from the variable I'm passing in. This is a little bit messy. So what I could do instead is use that wonderful mutable keyword. So I'll go back to doing this and all I have to do is say that this Lambda is mutable by just sticking that mutable keyword right there. What this means is the variables that you pass by value, like I just did with this X, you can change them. And of course, what this will do is basically what I showed you with that Y example. It's going to create a local variable out of it. It's just that in your source code, it's going to look a lot cleaner. And of course, outside of this function, so like after I call this Lambda over here, X will still be set to eight. It will not increment and be set to nine. You're not passing it by reference now, like you would if you did this you're still passing it by value. So it still will be eight here because you're just copying that value eight into this Lambda. All right, that is what the mutable keyword is. Again, as I said earlier, you'll be using it with classes and const like 90% of the time. I honestly do not think I've ever written it inside a Lambda like this before. It just, it just doesn't happen in practice. I haven't even seen code like this very often at all. If you have any more questions about mutable or constants or anything, you can leave a question in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can show me that you did by hitting that like button below. And you can also support this series on Patreon to make sure that more episodes are made by going to patreon.com forward slash and get some cool rewards like seeing episodes early and contributing to the planning and suggesting topics and all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.